Hi everyone, Class 47 Peter here. Welcome to another Model Railway review. And the model I'm reviewing today is one I'm very excited about because this model I have been looking forward to immensely for two years now. Join me as I take as I take a look at the LNER J70 tram produced by Rapido Trains exclusively for Model Rail. Now of all the new releases, this is the one that I've been excited for the most. I've always loved the J70s in real life, so when these were announced back at Wally in 2016, I knew that I had to buy one. It was going to be a no-brainer. The one I've ordered is the one with the full skirts and the cow catchers. Very much as you can see on the real photo of a real one. On the front of the box here. Now, in this new in this new format of review videos, what I've been doing is for the past few review videos, I've been speeding the footage up when I unbox the model. But I'm not going to do that with this one. I'm going to take my time with this one, especially because this is a model I've been excited for the most. <laughs> so I'm not going to speed up the footage with this one. No I'm harming doing that for this one review video. So this is the box that we get. We've got a photograph of a real J70 on the front there as you can see. We've got Rapido Trains written in the top corner there. This is the model that's been manufactured by and it's produced exclusively for model rail as you can see at the top there. On the side of the box you have the information and so I'll just unbox the model. There's also a bit of brief history as well on this side on the box of the real J70s which is nice. As for the box itself, it's a very nice firm rigid box this, so it is very protective. Now upon taking the lid off the box, inside we have this manual for the model. I'm not going to flick through this or read through it, but it's mainly full of the stuff that we're used to seeing now, that we've seen before. So that's quite nice that they've done that, so I'll put that to one side. Then we have the exploded diagram for the model, which I'll put in my folder where I keep all my instruction manuals later. Then we take off the foam cover and you can see that the packaging, it's, a, it's the block of ice packaging, the plastic ice cube, which is inserted in this piece of foam. Upon removing the plastic packaging, we have this set of detail parts. We have some etched parts which looks to be builders and number plates and some other bits and bobs as well as window frames as well which is interesting. In the packaging it is slightly different from the norm. You've got the box cover there, the sleeve, but then also you have another detail pack here we have some doors, as you can see, to put on the model. Chaining couplings and some cow catches, which I will talk about these later on. But going back to the packaging, once we've sleeved off the plastic sleeve, it actually comes in this packaging that I've seen in blister packagings before. It's clipped into place with ease. You just simply pull it off like that. And then you lift the model out. 
like so. We uncarefully wrap it, or we carefully wrap it I should say rather, not uncarefully. And we can now look at the model in detail. So we're going to start with the skirts, otherwise known as the side plates. So first of all we have these separately fitted metal chains, as you can see there. And that really is, to me, that's a fantastic bit of detail to have on the model. You've also got the early emblem there that's crisply printed on. And just look at the detail on the skirts as well. The rivet detail in the places. It really does look superb. Now I've got the model lying down on this sponge here so I don't damage the model because what I'm looking at you can see we've got a pre-fitted brake rod as you can see there on the model but also you can see you've got the link motion and the valve gear and the side rods there just like on the real thing because on the real locomotives they did have the slide bars and all the outside motion parts but obviously on the Wishbeck and Upwell tramway which is where the ones with these skirts and cow catchers worked obviously they would be hidden behind the skirts there and you would only notice them when the skirts were removed but I didn't expect that to be shown on the models with the skirts I expected all this outside motion, motion parts to have been left off so for that to have been shown on the model wow you know that really is fantastic so that's a thumbs up that is it's nice to see on the model as well. The cow catchers are very nicely detailed and they are removable. Which is why you get some in that little accessory bag I showed you earlier. Because you can actually remove these cow catchers fitted on the model if you want. These ones here are fitted on the model. They do have this gaping hole in them which is there to fit the NEM couplings in. But you can remove them if you want and I shall be removing the one at the front as well as the coupling. So I can have this end with detailing on and the other end where I couple my stock up to. I've also got this chaining coupling here. As you can see, which looks very nice. As standard on most models now. Sprung metal buffers. I've also got the Loco's room number, crispy printed down the front. And there's some nice rivet detail on the buffer beam, as you can see there. Now you can see on both ends of the model you have the window frames and the glazing fitted. Now these are modelled in the closed position. These window frames here that it gets in this detail pack are there if you want to model the windows in the open position. And that explains you how to do that in the manual. But I won't be modelling these windows in the upper position, I'm going to leave them as they are. But you can also see we have separately fitted lamp irons on the model as well as these what look like hooks of some sort on the front of the model as well. We now move on to the roof and I've got to show you the chimney. Just look at the mesh on that. Wow. That looks superb, that does. You know, that really is... That's amazing, that little bit of detail, that is. It really is incredible. And then I'll bring my attention to the bell. Now, the bell on this model hasn't been painted. It's the same shade of paint as on the roof, as you can see. Now, there is a very good reason for that. I can't remember the exact reason offhand, but it was something to do with it being difficult to do at the factory and the idea is, is for you to paint it in a particular shade of gold that you like. I might do it or I might just leave it as it is. But it's separately fitted and it still looks nice regardless. And to be fair I don't think it would have stayed gold for long anyway. Because that after a while would have been weathered and got dirty. Now I turn my attention to the boiler. Now it has been modelled as you can see, even though it's mostly hidden. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you a picture of the J70 boilers which will be popping up on screen now and I'll take this time to thank Rapido Trains for allowing me permission 
to use the photo of these J70 boilers in this review video. So Rapido Trains, if you're watching, thanks very much. And the amount of detail on the boilers, it really is stunning. They didn't necessarily had to model them, because it's hidden mostly on the model, but they have, and it really does enhance the model. And that's also a Rapido Trains thing. You know, they do, even if detail parts are hidden, they still model them. And I think doing that, it enhances the model. And it makes it even more stunning. But I will show you some of the details that are visible. For a start, you've got that turning wheel there. And that fire hole door there, as you can see. And also you've got the dial there, which you can just about see as well, through the window. And the printing on that looks amazing. It does look superb. You also have the separately fitted metal handles in the doorways. And they are very nice, fine separately fitted handrails as well. You also have the side windows, which are modelled shut. I believe you can model them open if you wish. But I'm going to leave them shut like with the end windows. And just like the end windows, they are glazing in these two. So what I'm going to do now, I've put the camera back on the tripod, because I'm going to show you fitting these detail parts. It is worth going through the manual, as you can see here. Can't quite show it fully on screen, of course, because <laughs> of where the camera's positioned. But this manual is very, very helpful and handy as well. So what we're going to do first is we are going to remove this cow catch at the front here. This is where I'm going to make the front of the loco. So what we're going to do here, we're going to unclip it. Well, first of all, we need to remove the coupling. There we are. I thought for a second it wasn't going to budge, but it has. So that's removed. We'll just lift, lift up the coupling there a bit. Now that should clip off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to light down on this sponge. And I'm going to tip it upside down and it comes off like so as you can see and I'm going to take out the one cow catcher and this should clip into place well we might have to actually remove it should apparently clip into place so it's having to remove the end pocket But the limp pocket seems to be stopping it from doing that. Oh, hang on now, sorry, it's not stopping it. Sorry, that was my fault. I won't do it right. <laughs> but there we go. That's now nice and snug in place, as you can see. So this can now be put to one side because now we're going to be focusing on the doors. So I've tipped out all the accessories. Now the doors closed look like this in the detailed bag when you open them up. For the doors open they are these separately pieces here. Now if you flick to the manual where it tells you how to fit these doors on it basically says 
that to do it you can use plastic magic and run a thin bead of it in the lip inside the aperture just here you don't necessarily have to use it though you can use poly cement but it does say you can just press it into the aperture the diagonal braces should be on the inside a spot of Dulux materials plastic magic will secure the doors in place so the musker that way we've got obviously the blank detail on not that way because that's obviously that's on the outside that's on the inside those detailed parts Yes, yeah, so we've got one of it, one end clipped in. Yes, there we go. It's clipped into place without the use of glue. As you can see, and so I'll casually do the other end. There we go. Okay, so with the doors now on, I'm now going to consult the manual to fit on the chains, which are these here, which actually fit on the buffer beam just here. You can see the little holes there. And I, sh I shall be gluing these on. using some good old poly cement so now I'm going to glue these into place using a pair of tweezers I do apologise if this is getting a bit dragged out. But I thought I'd put this in in case you might find it interesting me adding these detail parts on. There we go, there's one of them. I'll only show you I didn't these on the one end in this video the others I'll do off camera and then I'll show you them in, the, in a while I mean the tools I'm using are not the best in the world but they can still do it they're still doing the job there we go so those are now added so I'll add the others off camera so those little chains and they're one in place so all the detail parts that I wanted to fit have now been added I apologize if that was a bit dragged out but I just wanted to show you me fitting the detail parts on because some of you might have found it interesting but now we can come on to the running performance and seeing how this model runs and this is how smoothly the model runs out the box and this is how it should run because the last thing we want when opening up these models brand new is for motors to be burning out or them not working straight off but this is how they should run straight from the box and she's a smooth runner I haven't got to run around too fast just a nice slow speed like this
And this is certainly something quite different to have on the layout and in the fleet. And she does make an interesting size. So now we come to the loaded test run for the J70, and I've got to pull in the rake of teaks around the layout. This, now, the J70s wouldn't be pulling these carriages in real life, but I've just done this to show you just how strong this model is for its size. Because as you can see, she can manage them easily with no problems at all. But then, it is quite heavy, so there's a lot of weight in this, which provides all the traction. But just look at this. I mean, that's just mind-blowing. I'm absolutely staggered. I didn't think she'll be able to move that rake at all. But she can. So now I'm going to show you a more prototypical train that the J70s would have been found hauling. A rake of box fans. Now there's only about seven behind the loco, but this is... You know, you would find rakes like this easily behind the loco, but they did even, believe it or not, all long strings of these as well. So I think that's my next ambition in model railways now, to start trawling sites like eBay to try and find more of these box vans in this livery similar to the BR Bauxite livery, which is the livery that these are in. It's a nice long rake of these vans behind the J70. That would be amazing. But you know, even with just seven plus a brake van, it still recreates the train that they would have been found hauling. So what do I think of this model? Well, to be honest, I think everything I have said in this review throughout speaks volumes. Both Rapido trains and Model Rail have come together and they produced an absolute gem of a model. I mean this model it really is amazing. It's out of this world and I cannot fault it. 124 quid well spent and I highly recommend that you all go out there and buy yourself one of these models because you will not be disappointed. Was the wait worth it? Absolutely. And I've been waiting for this day for two years and it's definitely been worth it and she's going to be a valuable member of this fleet so that brings me on to the end of this video I hope you've all enjoyed watching my review on the Rapida Trains J70 produced exclusively for Model Rail again go out there and buy one of these if I could I'd buy all of them but you know what, I love this model so much that I might even be tempted to buy a second one. Because I absolutely love it. So thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel, get us to 2000 subscribers. Check out all our other content and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.